Hello, my name is Ed Chapman, and this video cast is going to cover our second uh, set of benchmarks about the properties of water and the basic chemistry of life. And this slideshow is going to focus on macromolecules. And as you can see, there are four basic categories of macromolecules in biology. There are lipids, otherwise known as fats and oils, uh, proteins, nucleic acids, otherwise known as DNA and RNA, and carbohydrates, are probably the ones most of us associate with food. So what are we talking about when we talk about macromolecules? Well, macromolecules, just as the word implies, macro means larger. So macromolecules are the molecules of life that are built from smaller molecules put together. And these smaller molecules are called monomers. So if you have a whole bunch of identical or very similar little molecules and you hook them together, okay, building polymers out of monomers, you build a large macromolecule. So if you watch this little animation here, you can see we're hooking together monomers with bonds to build a polymer. And so when we're finished, the whole structure, the whole thing, can be referred to as a macromolecule or a polymer because it has many pieces. Um, that's where the prefix poly comes from. So we can call this whole assembly a polymer. And depending on the monomers that you put together, you can build different categories of polymers, such as proteins, carbohydrates, lipids, and nucleic acids. So we're going to explore each one of these in turn. Now, to hold monomers together, you've got to build a special kind of bond. And this special kind of bond is built through a process called dehydration synthesis, which simply means that the molecules are being dehydrated in the sense that water is being squeezed out or produced. So this is accomplished by enzymes whose jobs it is to put these molecules together. So let's say we have two monomers here. Here we have a blue monomer with an OH group on it and another identical one with an OH group on it and we want to squeeze them together. All right, We're going to use an enzyme to attach them to each other. When we do this, we produce a water molecule because if you look carefully, we're going to take an OH from this one and an H from this one and OH plus H gives you water. So this type of bonding process is called a dehydration synthesis and it produces a little bit of water as a side effect, so to speak. Now carbohydrates are our first group of macromolecule and carbohydrates include three different size categories. They're the monosaccharides, otherwise known as simple sugars, disaccharides, and polysaccharides. Um, glucose is the monomer that you're probably going to hear the most about. It's the sugar that plants make during photosynthesis and it's a simple sugar. Now if we take two glucoses and hook them together we build a disaccharide in which case we build a molecule called maltose. Okay, maltose is another kind of sugar. It's, only, it's a little bit bigger than glucose, twice the size, and it's called a disaccharide. All right, long chains of glucoses, or the polymers of glucose, are called polysaccharides. And polysaccharides are actually hundreds of sugars long. But you can think about it this way. If we put together all these glucoses, we can build a polymer of glucose um, called a polysaccharide. And here are three examples of polysaccharides. You may have heard of it, two of these, starch and cellulose. Glycogen is a third. Notice that all of these polymers are built from glucoses hooked together in different ways. Starch, you can see all the glucoses are hooked together one right after the other like a, 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 a train of train cars. And in cellulose, same situation except every other glucose has been flipped. So the bond is a little bit different here. And finally in glycogen, looks a lot like starch except we've got branching chains here. So these are three examples of polysaccharides, all of them built from the monomer we call glucose. Now some carbohydrates that you need to know, we're going to make a list here. I want you to know the name of them, how big they are, and one or two facts about each one. So let's start with glucose. Glucose, of course, is a monosaccharide. It's our smallest sugar, and it's the sugar that floats around in your bloodstream. It uh, has to be regulated as part of homeostasis, or you can get very sick. And people who have problems regulating their glucose because of a, an insulin issue are called diabetics. We'll talk more about that later in the year. Fructose is another monosaccharide. It's found in fruits, uh, it's sometimes called fruit sugar. Lactose, a disaccharide, or double sugar, found in milk. You may have heard about milk. Um, sugars in milk. Uh, sucrose, which is another disaccharide, is cane sugar or white table sugar, the crystalline kind of sugar that we add to drinks and sodas and are found in, um, in five pound bags in the grocery store. Uh, amylose, a polysaccharide, otherwise known as starch. Uh, most of you have probably eaten amylose when you eat popcorn. 
Um, we like to put things on it, uh, like salt and sugar and um, butter to make it taste better. But amylose is a type of starch. Glycogen, another polysaccharide. It's used by your body to store lots and lots of glucoses and chains in our livers. Uh, chitin, which is a type polysaccharide that's used by insects to build their shells. It's um, waterproof, flexible, indigestible. Cellulose, our third poly, excuse me, our fourth example of a polysaccharide here. It's what plants use to build their cell walls. And here we have a pretty good list of a bunch of different carbohydrates. They vary in size. We started out small and we got larger. And one fact about each uh, carbohydrate. Now let's look a little bit more closely at glucose. You already should know the chemical formula for glucose, C6H12O6. And you probably already know that plants produce glucose or producers produce glucose as part of photosynthesis. The actual structure of glucose is based on a hexagon with six carbons. Now there's a carbon up here, and everywhere there's a corner in the hexagon, there is another carbon. So if we count them, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. So get, that gives us the C6, and if you count the H's and the O's here, you'll come up with the other numbers. Just to kind of a, a shape of a molecule that you should be familiar with, what glucose looks like. Uh, carbohydrates almost always can be identified by their taste and their texture. They usually are sweet or at least pasty in the mouth. Uh, they dissolve in water like sugars or they attract water and mix with water very well like um, flour and rice and things like that. They absorb water. They form those hydrogen bonds. And most names for carbohydrates end in O-S-E. So if you see a chemical named if you see a chemical name with O-S-E at the end, we're almost always talking about a carbohydrate, probably some kind of sugar. All right, sucrose is otherwise known as cane sugar. Here's a picture of sugar cane. It's a plant, looks a lot like bamboo, although it's not bamboo. Uh, picture of sugar like you might have seen from a grocery store. Sucrose is probably the most common sugar that we consume in foods uh, that we identify as sugar. Uh, the other sugar that we consume a lot of is high fructose corn syrup which you'll see on the ingredients of most sodas. Uh, starches like amylose are in lots of foods, usually the white foods that we like to put butter or salt on, like pasta and potato and tortillas and rice. Okay, Starches are an important part of most people's diets. Uh, we get most of our calories from starch. Um, cellulose, cellulose can't be digested. It's also known as dietary fiber. It's what we call a structural poly uh, polysaccharide because it's used to build cell parts, especially cell walls. Um, it's named after the fact that it comes from cell walls, hence the name cellulose or cell wall sugar. Um, when in, we did our microscope lab, I hope you guys got a chance to look closely at paper and you can see the fibers of cellulose in the paper. Chitin is another structural polysaccharide. It's also waterproof, flexible, uh, but also indigestible like cellulose. Um, arthropods use it to build their shells, and here you can see a cicada shell. Some of you may have seen stuck to a tree. This is almost pure chitin, a type of polysaccharide. Uh, it's also found in the shells of many um, other organisms that are related to insects, like these shrimp. Um, carbohydrates are what we call hydrophobic, or excuse me, hydrophilic, which means they're attracted to water. And this means most carbohydrates will dissolve or at least get very wet if you mix them with water. Um, in this picture here, you see water as a solvent being mixed with sugar, the solute, and you end up with a sugar solution. Um, sugar is very hydrophilic. It'll dissolve in water. Um, sugar is able to dissolve in water because it forms hydrogen bonds, and the water molecules, because of the hydrogen bonding, can get between the sugar crystals and literally pull them apart and make them disappear into the solution. Our next uh, category of polysaccharides are going to be lipids, and we'll save that for our next slideshow.